Originally published in 1994, Warriors Don't Cry by Melba Patillo Beals primarily delves into the events of the 1957-58 school year at Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. During this time, Melba Beals was one of the Little Rock Nine, a group of black students who bravely became the first to attend the formerly all-white high school, alongside approximately 2,000 white students. Although Beals's book is aimed at young adult readers, it offers insight into her early life and numerous accomplishments as an adult. Despite being encouraged by school administrators and local civil rights leaders to downplay their experiences, the nine students faced daily violence, threats, and humiliation. In her narrative, Melba candidly recounts the dangers she and her peers encountered, the dramatic changes in her life, and how she summoned the inner strength to persevere and complete the school year at Central High. Beals also penned an updated version of her narrative in 2007, coinciding with the 50th anniversary of her participation in the integration of Central High School. Melba Beals was born on December 7, 1941, on Pearl Harbor Day. Her early life was marked by adversity, as she underwent emergency surgery as an infant. Tragically, her life was jeopardized when medical personnel neglected to follow prescribed aftercare procedures solely because of her race. Melba's family consisted of her mother, Lois, her grandmother India, and her brother Conrad. Lois, who worked as an English teacher, instilled a love of reading in her children even before they reached school age. Growing up, Melba was acutely aware of the pervasive racial inequality that persisted. On May 17, 1954, a pivotal moment occurred when the U.S. Supreme Court struck down school segregation. On that historic day, teachers sent black students home early and advised them to stay together in groups. In a horrifying encounter, Melba, who had been left alone, was assaulted by a white man consumed by rage over the court's decision. Fortunately, the intervention of another student prevented a tragedy. In 1957, without informing her family, Melba Beals sought admission to Central High School, a white school, taking a momentous step in the fight against racial segregation. During a family vacation in Cincinnati, Melba's family receives the news that she will be one of the students participating in the integration of Central High School. This announcement stirs up a storm of controversy. Segregationists issue threats against Melba, while black leaders applaud her courage. Speculation runs rampant, with rumors circulating that Governor Faubus might intervene to prevent black students from attending the school. People from various states arrive in Little Rock, determined to obstruct integration. Governor Faubus responds by deploying the Arkansas National Guard, ostensibly to prevent violence, but in reality to block black students from entering Central High. On the first day scheduled for black students to attend, Melba's mother drives her as close to the school as possible. As they approach, they spot another black student, Elizabeth Eckford, attempting to navigate through the guardsmen. Witnessing the tense situation and facing the wrath of angry segregationists, Melba and her mother quickly retreat, reaching their car and hastily driving away. Upon returning home, Melba's grandmother, India, locks down the house and forbids Melba from going outside. She imparts a powerful message to Melba emphasizing that she is a warrior for the Lord and that warriors must not shed tears. In the media, the group of students becomes known as the Little Rock Nine. Thurgood Marshall, an attorney of great renown, arrives to represent them, and a judge concludes that there is no valid threat justifying the presence of the National Guard. He rules that the black students should commence attending Central starting the following Monday. On that fateful Monday, the nine students enter Central discreetly through a side entrance. Across the street, a hostile mob of segregationists threatens to breach police lines and harm the black students. Inside the school, administrators separate the nine, but they continue to endure verbal abuse and physical attacks. Realizing that the police are unable to contain the mob, law enforcement officials gather the nine students in the school's loading docks and arrange for them to return home before noon. By Wednesday morning, representatives of the federal government inform Melba that she will receive protection from troops belonging to the 101st Airborne Division, in accordance with President Eisenhower's orders. A convoy of jeeps, each armed with machine guns, escorts the nine black students to Central High. Upon arrival, each student is assigned a soldier as a personal guard. Melba's guard, Dan, takes a moment to explain the limitations of his ability to protect her. 
During a pep rally on a Friday, white football players confront Melba, subjecting her to a choking incident. When she returns to school the following Monday, she finds that the 101st Airborne Division troops have been replaced by National Guard troops. The ensuing chaos prompts officials to reinstate the 101st Airborne Division troops the next day, reuniting Melba with Dan. At one point, a white student hurls acid into Melba's eyes, causing immediate distress. Dan reacts swiftly, rinsing her eyes with water and preventing severe damage to her vision. As the holiday season approaches, the situation within the school worsens. The number of soldiers decreases, while segregationists intensify their attacks. The superintendent of schools summons the nine students and their parents to a meeting. During the meeting, he advises them not to retaliate against white violence. Lois, Melba's mother, questions how he plans to protect black students, but the superintendent dismisses her concerns, deeming it none of her business. Civil rights leaders also gather the students and their families, commending them for their courage. Despite her excitement about her upcoming 16th birthday on December 7, Melba's old friends are too afraid to visit her. They are attending a Christmas party, to which Melba has not been invited. Minnie Jean Brown, one of the nine, is suspended after segregationist boys harass her and cause her to accidentally spill her lunch on others. Over the holiday season, the nine students attend a party hosted by a national sorority for professional black women. Christmas provides a brief interlude of normality for Melba. During this tumultuous period, one student named Andy violently attacks Melba on two separate occasions. When Andy and other boys approach Melba outside the school with the intention to harm her, another boy named Link discreetly slips her his car keys to facilitate her escape. Link subsequently contacts Melba to warn her that Andy intends to harm her if given the opportunity. On another occasion, segregationist boys surround Melba in the school's lunchroom. In their attempts to provoke a confrontation with her, they surround Melba during lunchtime. Link is among them, but as the lunch period ends, he manages to persuade the boys to leave so they don't miss their classes. Later that evening, Link reaches out to Melba, who initially accuses him of being a segregationist. However, he gradually earns her trust by revealing potential dangers she should be aware of. As Easter draws near, segregationists intensify their efforts to pressure the nine students into dropping out of school before the end of the year. Link secretly invites Melba to accompany him one Saturday morning, taking her to the home of Nana Healy, his beloved black nanny who is seriously ill. Watching Link tenderly care for Nana Healy deepens Melba's trust in him. In a bid to force Melba's withdrawal, school administrators refuse to renew her mother, Lois's teaching contract. In response, Lois and India, Melba's grandmother, seek the assistance of journalists and local black clergy. Under mounting pressure, the administration eventually renews Lois's contract. The remaining eight black students successfully complete the school year, with Ernie Green becoming the first black graduate of Central, although the others are unable to attend his graduation ceremony. Unable to halt the process of integration, Governor Faubus orders the closure of all Little Rock High Schools, resulting in Melba going an entire year without formal schooling. She relocates to California, where she completes her high school education and goes on to attend college. In 1961, she marries a white soldier named John Beals, and together they have a daughter named Kelly. After 30 years since their initial integration, the original nine students gather at Central High School. They receive a warm welcome from Governor Bill Clinton and the student body president, a young black man. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.